Jim, thank you. It's not every day that you hear about a plane making a crash landing in a lake, especially in one of our lakes. Six months ago, a man trying to land his amphibious plane near Gilbert uh, crashed into Lake Murray. He survived that crash, and today our Stephen Dial caught up with the divers who recovered his plane. Here's the story. We do a lot of searching in the Lake Murray. There's a lot of great things to find. Midlands divers Stephen Franklin and John Baker are familiar with the waters of Lake Murray and enjoy finding hidden treasures. When they heard that a plane crashed in the lake back in April, they jumped at the opportunity to recover it. I had heard about the aircraft crashing back in April and was kind of given a general location. From there, I did some side scanning sonar, which I've done for the past few years in the lake. And I uh, was able to find the plane in just a few days. The NTSB says that the pilot of the amphibian plane tried to make a landing on the lake when something went wrong with his gear. The pilot only had minor injuries and survived the crash. Franklin and Baker worked with the pilot's insurance company and the Atlanta Air Salvage Company to recover the plane that was close to 130 feet underwater. Sometimes the conditions get better, maybe up to 10 feet. It's in about 52 degrees of water. And the plane set in the riverbed right around 130 feet. So we had issues of decompression and uh, things that we had to deal with on the dive and uh, kind of made it not the easiest dives ever. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty tough. The two had to hook the aircraft to a crane, and it took about two hours to pull it out of the lake. That was definitely a dangerous dive, but within our limits, and yeah. it was enjoyable for us. Despite the challenges, recovering the plane is definitely something these two can check off their diving bucket list. Being the first to dive a wreck um, is kind of nice, and then also being the only ones to dive it, and then being part of the salvage process, process it's uh, very unique and very rewarding, and we had a good time. Yeah, it was a blast. Yeah. Stephen Dial, News 19, WLTX. Well, uh, we heard about the crash, which happened in April, and uh, shortly thereafter in May, I went out on the lake using side scan sonar and found the plane after a few days. At that point, I contacted John, who's a fellow diver that I dive with all the time at Scuba John's, and uh, we decided that we'd go ahead and dive the plane, which uh, we did, and that completed the finding of it because it's just about as hard to find underneath the water as it was side scanning on the top. So we dove it, we found it, and then we started working with SE and G and the insurance company of the aircraft and got to the point where they hired a salvage company who in turn hired us because we had done all the diving on it and found it and we were actually the only two that have ever dove on it so wow. yeah so how hard was it to bring it up man that went really smooth today I yeah it, it was very smooth so we went down and to the plane and hooked the rigging up to the wings and, uh, and that's pretty much you know you got a couple other tethers on some parts that were dangling and uh fixed yeah. it picked it right up so yeah, it went, actually went a lot smoother than we, we thought. thought it was going yeah, to we thought yeah. be a little difficult. It was pretty much uh, vertical, but to its angle in the silt. Um, Upside down. And it was among some trees. It uh, was right in the old Saluda River Channel, uh, about 125, 130 feet of water, the deepest point. And there were trees around it and actually some <laughs> kind of poking on it, but not. it didn't in, adhere to pulling it up. So. Um. So it took you a few days just to find it, and how long did it take you to pull it up? Well, it's been a long process, actually. Uh, we did probably uh, almost a dozen dives on it, um, just assessing it. It, it. Over time, it slowly came more in the silt, um, and there were some changes to it. And uh, we attached uh, not a surface buoy, but a buoy that was just about 20 feet under the water, so that way we could have a downline to it always and go down to it. Um, so yeah, about uh, from May to about now, and working with the insurance company and the salvage company, and coming together all today and making it happen. Where does it go now? Now they're going to cut it up and put it on a trailer and take it to a scrapyard. It's it's no longer an airworthy aircraft. Is this the first plane you guys have pulled oh, out of here? Or? It's the first plane we've done other salvage work uh, to my dive shop and like doing like uh, cars that wreck in you know ponds or other bodies of water. So, but this would be my, our yeah. first plane. First plane. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was easier than the cars. Yeah. It was yeah, easier than the cars. Was. Yeah. Uh, what else would you like to tell me? Uh, I don't want to mention the shop. Just, uh, we can. Pretty, yeah, we, uh, we do a lot of diving out here. Uh, we're always searching for stuff using uh, our side scan sonars, and we dive a lot of the local spots. Um, 
our own Scuba John's Dive Shop right down the road from here, actually. And uh, we do lake diving charters, and uh, um, we have a full service dive shop just you know, right up the road in Lexington. There's a lot of great things to dive here in Lake Murray, and as you can see, this is one of them. <laughs> yeah. Biggest fishing of the time. That's right. Fish. <laughs>